You're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for us to take a look at the big stories on our national dailies. And we have our guest, Chidi Johnson, joining us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. And good morning to, good morning to all our viewers all over the world. Good morning. So, Thank sorry, you for joining us. Um, all right, uh, we're kicking off with, uh, I'm going to start with the Nation newspapers this morning and see what we can quickly find over there. I'll take one or two of them. Um, in Kogi State, we had a conversation about this yesterday, the PTA versus Kogi State, but it's up there. It says, how we are fighting COVID-19 by Kogi government. Also, uh, one story that a lot of Nigerians are not going to be happy to hear. It says, petrol price likely to rise with a fr um, freight hike. Uh, government and labor in talks. Uh, APC members' uh, resignation or registration, sorry, legal. Buni replies Akonde. Mena son Faisal flees to the U uh, US, EFCC tells court. The big one there governors move to Dow's rising tension over headers. Uh, Uzadimma, Bagudu, and Badarun meet with Ohaneze, Mieti, and others. North Helmsmen, Elrify, caution against escalating violence. Also, NN, uh, NLNG paid a $3 billion or $35 billion uh, dividend from $108 billion uh, income. Domestic credits rise by 774.28 billion naira. That's also on the nation. A few others, 2023 election, INEC plans new 57,023 polling units. And lawyers fought Buhari's extension of police IG Adamu's tenure. Uh, the last one, Oloni Shokin, Buratai and others tipped as ambassadors as the three Yahoo boys are jailed. Jude Johnson, there's so much. Um, I don't know which uh, two you would like to quickly jump on with. Well, I, I think we should start with governor's move to doubt potential providers. How did they justify the security vote they collect if issues have to escalate to this level and they are just making move to doubt the sanction. I don't know how often the governor is called the State Security Council meeting, which involves the governor, all the security agencies, head of security agencies and military formations in their state. Um, it's teaching time since nine. I think if the governors have really done their job as the chief security officer of the state, they've done the right thing, we shouldn't get to the issue of having tensions with, with the with the others. And the other story I want to talk about is the uh, how we are fighting COVID-19, is the hypocrisy of the Kogi State government that um, is fighting COVID-19. Someone that has lived in, 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 in self-denial concerning COVID-19 is not saying that he's fighting COVID-19. Um, he's not fighting anything. He's just saying statement, which I think the media shouldn't have been reported in the first instance. Another story we need to look also is that petrol prices likely to increase and nigeria is a mono economy and when i mean by mono economy the source of our income the totality of our economy is dependent on petroleum a hike in petroleum prices will surely lead to inflation and it will contribute to the hardship that an average nigerian is going through so government needs to have a rethink and uh, in terms of hiking the prices of petroleum petroleum product because this Pillover effect and the spiraling effect it will have on the economy. Most Nigerians will not be able All right. to cope with it. It will come with its attendant um, challenges. The last story I'll talk about in the nation is INEC planning to start. They are planning. This is 2021. Election is in 2023. They said they are planning. Shouldn't it have been their plan that by, by this year, the creation of those pooling units should have started, not that they are just planning to do. Now, if you recall, before the last election, the electoral bill was not assented to, passed by the Eighth National Assembly, by the president, because the president said the time was short mm -hmm. for him to start to assent to the bill. Now, no, there's no bill with respect to legislating on 2023 election before the president, before the National Assembly, even by INEC or other stakeholders to deal with the issue. Those who wait till late hour to take decision will surely be late in getting results. Mm. All right. Let's uh, turn to another newspaper now. Let's look at the Nigerian Tribune. It says, RGP, 
three more months for Adamu Wrong, and that's according to the PDP at Digborua and Ozekome. They say for now, Nigeria has no IGP recognized by the law. Alleged money laundering, Mayna's son, Faisal, flees to U.S., EFCC tells court, and his surety loses his house. NDDC, Senate raises the alarm over 6.25 billion naira palliative expenditure. Amocheku flushes out 37 herdsmen, 5,000 cows from forest reserves in Ondo. Buhari nominates Oloni Shaki, Burotai, others ex-service chiefs as ambassador. And uh, the PDP is saying this is a plot to avert uh, an investigation by the ICC. And Falana says ambassadorial appointments cannot starve off probe. Varsity workers strike takes off midnight today. Sanu president saying there's no end in sight. While Nasu and Sanu writes breaches, bright branches to commence a strike. Also, we see Einik Chairman here saying why we want to expand access to polling units. Court upholds Lagos government's restriction order on Okada Kekenapep. Eviction of herdsmen portends danger to peaceful coexistence, northern governors. And uh, this one saying, this one by Orufai saying, insurgents, criminals should not be allowed to tear Nigeria apart, along with so many other stories here on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. But uh, you would agree with me that the one with the IGP and uh, how people are condemning the move, the extension move, uh, is one of the biggest. Would you like to address that, Mr. Johnson? Yeah, there's, there's, there's no law backing tenor extension. It's like the National Assembly coming up to make law saying that at the expiration of the president's second term, which marks the end of his tenor in May 29, 2023, that they, are, they will extend the tenor of the president by six months. It's an illegality. Nobody knew. It's because our institutions are a bit, are a bit weak. If anybody should go to court and challenge this a decision, you know that this is an, um, an illegal decision by the president because it's the president does not mean president operates within the framework of the law and that you are the president, you are not given the liberty or the right to operate outside the framework of, of the law. And then what a tepid excuse by the president that the president needs three months to 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 to, to pick this up. So if on the issue of IT, if you take, if you take the it will take the president three months just a simple decision. What about decisions that affect the totality of all, all Nigerians? That So it will take President years for him to take that decision. We knew quite all right. The tenor of this IG will expire. And the date, the, from the date he has run office, the process will have started with succession. There's no success without succession. And it's a big challenge for this administration, extending the tenors of people whose tenor, um, whose term of office had expired. Um, I think Mr. Mr. Johnson, it do you, do you think um, growth and development of our nation? Yeah. The other one is I mean, hold, hold on, Mr. Johnson. I, I want you to go on, go on, about, you know, on the same um, story. Do, do you see that as a reason Nigerians may, should be worried um, with you know the presidency and should, its ability to the respect our, the constitution that, and our that, laws? That, that retired, the attorney have been elongated, elongated, elongated. It's not good for the system. You destroy the morale of people within the system, the rank and file of the Nigerian police, because everybody that goes into the office knew quite all right that the tenor, would you, if you are extending the tenor of the, of the, of the IGP, are you going to extend the tenor of those that are meant to retire? Are you going to extend the date of their own retirement? You can't single, you can't be cherry picking in your policy formulation. And that's the challenge with this present administration. There's, there's no sincerity of purpose when it comes to taking decisions with respect to people heading the security apparatus, why do you need to? There's no, there's nobody that's an ally. There are thousands of people that could do the job of the IGP, and I think the earlier the president does that, the better. Right. Whether we like it or not, if anybody should go to court on paper and on record, and by the extant law of Nigeria, we don't have an inspector general of police. This one is just operating on on, on nothing, and you can't build something or not. It's ultra-biased, 
and is of no effect. All right. Uh, well, an Abuja-based lawyer, uh, Maxwell Ofara, has actually taken this matter to court, asking the federal government, you know, to stop uh, Mohamed Adamu from parading as the IGP of, of police. Uh, let's uh, look at this one now. Versity workers strike takes of midnight, you know, with Sanu Nasu saying, uh, Lots of things. They have issues with the sharing formula of, of the 40 billion Naira uh, allowances. They are saying they've not been paid. They have basically lots of grievances against the government. I don't know what you think about this one and the strike that they're about to begin. Nothing new. As you end, Stano takes over. It's the trend. We have been expecting this. So it's not in as once as you end their strike, Sano we start their own strike. It will not give me additional year in Unilag. So, because Azu went on strike, Sanu went on strike after Azu. That's, it has been this cat and mouse game between Azu and Nasu. Once, because the moment government answers Azu, the non-academic staff will go on strike. Because without the non-academic staff, most of the activities in federal universities and even state universities cannot take place. So it's a cat and mouse game. We should expect that government should have learned from the past and negotiate with both bodies um, collectively. But if I have my way, I have said it over and over again. If I have my way, we will come to us. We will come to you. It's only in Nigeria you see Asu. It's only in Nigeria you see Sanu. Do you see Sanu or Asu in Britain or you see in other developed climates? We need to bring this nonsense to an end because we destroy the future. My generation was affected with Sanu and Asu strike. Some of us lost two years, some lost one year. So the same trend we made for you to do the same thing, the same way, the same manner, and expect to get the same result is the beginning of insanity according to Six Sigla. Must we continue on this trend? Must we must university lecturers in Lagos State and Kano State collect the same salary or in Karan or Moda? Let us really practice federalism. If you are talking about federalism, you also talk about fiscal federalism. Lecturers in the United States of America don't collect the same salary. The one in New York don't collect the same salary with the one in Montana or the one in, or the one in Nidao. So we need to we need we need we need we need to deregulate all of this aspect. And federal government needs to answer this. Let this university be self-sustaining. Let's not appoint professors as VC. Let's do for people that have business orientation. In the United States of America, the president are not necessarily this, they are not necessarily professors. In actual sense, professors don't want to run business. They can only teach in the academic. And that's why our university systems are not revenue self-sustaining institutions. If your university system cannot sustain themselves by raising money, by raising what, how can they produce graduate that will develop your economy, grow your economy, and sustain the economy? We need to stop this nonsense and to All stop right. this part. Mm. All right, quickly. Let Fena go hands off completely. The only area they should, they should, they should get involved is giving them infrastructure Outside of infrastructure, salaries, the running of the institution, this them up all this nonsense that will come strike. Academic session will be cancelled. In our own set, academic session was cancelled. My colleagues that went to school together graduated in 1994. Why those of us that were in Unilag graduated in 1995? All right. It's uh, pathetic. It's sickening. Uh, quickly, quickly also a respond to the story on um, Abdul Rashid Maynard's son uh, that the EFCC says has. Uh, uh, run away to the United States. Uh, the person, of course, uh, who... One, uh, take relax. It what has happened to the proof of the EFC chairman? Do they have a head? Now, he has said he ran. With which passport? Did they not flag his name? Through which border? What what, what are the immigration officers doing? In a, in, 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 if we are to hold public officers accountable, they should even come out to say this. They should resign. All those in charge will resign. All those that were in charge of that case, there's complicity somewhere. There's complicity. You cannot look just like that into the thing here without complicity at one level or the other. If you to the United States, how did he enter the United States? Someone on fraud allegation through which visa? Is he an American citizen? Even in this pandemic area, they, they, can, they, they can see that to the Marines. They can't tell us that. There's right. something fishy somewhere. And right. that's where journalism starts. When Let's, we are trying uh, to cover our stories, 
investigation starts for us to unravel the story. Mm. I think All right. Let's go to the Punch newspapers. In breaking news, uh, next. they should do a developing story on this matter. All right. The Punch newspapers are coming up next. Uh, this one here says, uh, states differ as Zamfara, Gombe, Ranchin, um, or your cross river and others oppose uh, project. Rather, let me start again. States differ as Zamfara and Gombe begin ranching. Or your cross rivers, others oppose project. Ruga settlements nearing completion, says Zamfara. Ranching set to take off, says uh, Nasarawa. Also, cattle rearing is a private business, or your state is saying. And the AKT says, no budget for ranching now. It's, you know, different opinions on the same thing. Also, Haneze warns against inciting comments, condemns headsmen's lawlessness. And here in Lagos, I saw videos of this yesterday. A man jumps to his death uh, from uh, 1004, um, high rising, I think from the sixth floor. Um, he was uh, fleeing a uh, raid by the EFCC. Sad. Oil farmers returning to communities seized by Fulani men. And that's a uh, monarch. And also gunmen raid FCT community, kidnap punch reporter and two others. PDP and others oppose Buratai and ex-service chief's nomination as ambassadors. You may want to, you know, uh, speak on that one. Um, also, um, we have um, the Sands fought IG's three-month tenure extension. That's also on the punch newspapers this morning. Again, Senate summons NDDC over 6.25 billion naira palliative sharing. It seems like the issues with the NDDC and mismanagement of funds are uh, never ending. Uh, total pension assets rose to 12.3 trillion in 2020, says Pencom. And the last one, EFCC describes how Minasan fled to the U.S. through Niger. Jide uh, Johnson, up to you now. Um, well, um, let's start with the service chief nomination as ambassador. Well, um, how do you nominate career people that have just ended their military career? As ambassadors, are there no career officers? As non career ambassadors, are there no career officers um, in the in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that you nominate as ambassador? And why should you nominate them? Is it a reward system for for serving very well? I think, like every other Nigerian, I think um, uh, reward them for what in terms of excellence, performance, or what? When we have um, banditry across the northwest, um, kidnapping across the south and Boko Haram across the Northeast, and you are rewarding them for what? I, I, I totally frown against, against that. Now, the issue of state different on ranching, Zamfara and Gumbi, like most advocates have said, Zamfara, cattle rearing is a personal business. It's not a state business. It's not. Why is the federal government and northern governors so keen but if you go to the underlying factor, you discover that majority of the people that hold these cows are, 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 are top politicians and the elites in the Nigerian side. I have asked this question, and this is the question the southern governors should throw to the northern governors. Can any northern state provide me with a land to raise pigs? Can, will they be favorably disposed to providing me with lands to raise pigs? as they do in Okiaro, in Ogun State. Will they provide land? They will say it's against their culture. They will say it's against their religion. Despite the fact that there are some parts of this country that it speaks. So this particular issue on, it should be something that government should leave for private individual to deal with. You do you create um, water zones for fishermen or for people that raise new? Or do you provide lands for people that are into farming? If you want to go to farm, you look for your private land, and then you do your farming. Our animal loss boundary is just a key component of, of the agricultural sector. It's just a subsector. So why is government so keen about is there anything other than just um, this? So that's my take. I don't think that we should be wasting our time, wasting state resources that are not even enough to provide infrastructural backbone that will lead to the development of all sector just for his top sector in the agrarian sector. Finally, on uh, the... I, I'm totally... Finally, speak on the nah. ND, NDDC um, issue, another 6.25 billion naira palliative sharing uh, uh, What has probe. happened? 
because on that note, you want me to up the mic, and I'm going to up the mic because we have not seen to the end of the up the mic. We have not seen the end to it. And we have not seen the end to the proof of um, of um, Magu as the EFCC as the EFCC acting chairman. We have not seen to the end of the NDDC proof. You see, it's just in a cycle. I hope um, that Nigerians we ask this question on 2023. Because this particular issue, they've asked us to off the mic, but you want to on the mic. But on that note, I'm going to off the mic because we have not seen as, the egg. As long as you don't faint, we're, oh, we're, yeah, exactly. we're good okay. to go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve Johnson, for your time and analysis the on the breakfast this morning. Have a great <laughs> day. And you too. All right. Uh, it's it's, welcome, it's pretty interesting. Welcome Along. to Nigeria, where, you know, issues like this, you know, the people involved turn it to national drama. I watched uh, something on TV the other day. This TV station was putting out a list of all the politicians that have fainted in court or have showed up with... Uh, stretchers or uh, Exactly. It's or, just hilarious. Um, it seemed everybody went to theater school yeah. and uh, found I themselves someone somehow came, in, in came politics. With, uh, with an infusion one time on the hospital bed uh, mm. to court. It's, it's, there's, uh, the one who also jumped from a moving vehicle. Uh, at some point, it's probably even <laughs> the same person. Well, I mean, so the thing you know that we we shouldn't you know always push aside is the fact that I it starts to seem like a lot of these stories just show up uh -huh. um, to excite you know Nigerians and to create conversations across the country because in the end you never well there's no end you never get to see the end of any of these probes any of these summons you never get to see anybody found guilty of mismanaging billions of naira. We're talking 6.25 billion naira for palliatives now by the NDDC once again. You would never get to see the end of this story. It, it, it might not even be in the headlines in two weeks. Um, and neither will anybody be, be sent to, to jail. And so when we talk about fighting corruption, I feel it's just, you know, words, you know, statements, news headlines that we just throw out there to make it seem like there's some action being taken. But it's, it doesn't feel in any way like anything changes or anything is done. Yeah. Just reminds me of what I mentioned yesterday about Austin being a leader that would actually put his or her feet on the ground and take action and not just speak words, you know, to, to make us feel good. But the challenge with that is we don't need a leader to do that. We need institutions. We need, we need a structure. We need to have a system that actually works. When you say you need a leader that would put his foot in there and make sure things work, it, it, that sounds like a dictator. That but sounds like a person institutions are run by people. So if we have people who have that sense of purpose, that value for integrity and things like that, yeah. then everything will begin to work. Absolutely. But, you you know, know. but not one person. Not one person. Yeah. Really let, let it be um, a yes. system. Let it be an institution that works. Anyway, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're telling you what happened today in history, the murder of a um, leader of the NAACP um, back then in 1963 um, would, um, of course, uh, a follow-up to that murder and a uh, person who was eventually found guilty, and then also the impeachment of a president. Stay with us.